Now, I know in these wacky times that we live in, everybody is included, we're all equal, men can do things that girls can do, and vice versa, but unfortunately, when we come back to reality, you're going to realize that that is not the truth, and that's the same thing for motorcycling too, which is exactly why I'm going to tell you why motorcycling is not for everybody, but how do you know? if motorcycling is for you. Well, I'm going to use a number of different examples of personality types that I think would be really bad at motorcycle riding and maybe even a personal example that I can give you as well. Now, I know some of you are not going to agree with one or two of the points I'm going to make. Maybe you do agree. Whatever your opinion, let me know down below. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. Let's go and get into it. Now, this is not gonna make me any friends right off the rip, and I think I'm gonna be able to sleep at night because I hope that you can self-analyze and say, okay, I possess this trait, I either need to break this habit before I get on a bike, or maybe it's just not for me. And that's totally okay. So, the first thing I wanna talk about is, how are you in your car? Are you accident prone? Have you ever been the person that's held up an entire city from getting to work, uh, by an hour or two hours or more because you were trying to rush and get there before everybody else. You weren't paying attention. You were on a cell phone. You caused accidents. If you're somebody that causes an accident uh, regularly, you don't need to be on a motorcycle because the thing you have in your vehicle, things like airbags, seatbelts, the way the cars are designed to kind of, you know, uh, some of the, the, the body components designed to kind of crush in so there's some give in the car, right? There's all kinds of safety features that we have in vehicles, but if you're somebody that gets into accidents uh, once every three years, once every five years, you may say, oh, that's, that's not terrible. Well, yeah, that one accident that you have can literally cost you your life. It only takes one on a motorcycle. Car driving is not a hard thing to do unless you're at a high level and you're doing like professional racing or NASCAR or something like that, uh, just regular car driving. It's not hard to stay out of an accident. And that's going to be some of the things that I talk about too to kind of expand upon this. But if you are accident prone, it is not a great decision to hop on a motorcycle. You're probably actually don't want to get on a motorcycle because just one accident on a bike is way different than an accident in a car. Now, you may say, I don't care what you say, Hag, I'm going to buy a motorcycle and I'm gonna ride it anyways. And to that, I would say, before you buy it, why don't you try to win the 2025 Indian Scow Bobber that I'm giving away right here on the channel. The only thing is, today is the very last day. At midnight tonight, this thing is getting cut off. So if you want a chance to win the brand new 2025 Indian Scout Bobber, today is your last day to do that. Now I've partnered up with the same small veteran owned business that I've done giveaways with in the past. And this one, we're keeping the time frame small and we are keeping the entries low as well. So you have a real chance to win something awesome. The way you enter is simple. There's one link in the description of this video that's gonna take you to Hegshot Nation, and that is my full catalog of videos, but it's more than that. It's early access, ad-free, exclusive videos, but also the community is the best part about it. If you wanna recommend a video, if you wanna talk with other community members, in between both channels, or if you want to stick with motorcycles, totally up to you. It is a fantastic place to be. Plus, there is an app as well. If you need to communicate with me directly, uh, we can do all of that in one place. So you sign up for six months to Hegshot Nation. It's 49 bucks. That gives you an automatic entry. We've been talking about it for two months, and now today is the day, and we do have less than 500 entries. So if you want probably your best chance to win a motorcycle like this, this is the giveaway to enter. So click the link in the description. You got to do it by midnight Pacific Standard Time tonight. That's when it gets cut off. Good luck to every single one of you. Are you somebody that pays attention to everything going on around you? Meaning, are you somebody that will anticipate a car pulling out in front of you? I can tell you firsthand that my wife is not this person. She doesn't expect that cars will pull out in front of her. Now, this is something I've tried to teach her on, and she's gotten way better. Uh, by the way, she was one of those people when I, I don't know, the first 10 years I knew her, where it would always be like a minor fender bender. One was actually a really serious crash, which is why I've been very hesitant to teach her riding a motorcycle, even though she says she wants to, right? But I know in her best interest at this point, um, 
even though she's getting closer to maybe being able to do that for sure and keep herself safe, uh, for the longest time, there's no way I would have ever encouraged her to ride a bike. And she even knew that back then too. So even though her skills have gotten better, being able to anticipate things that are going on, whether it's cars pulling out in front of you, um, going through intersections, stuff like that. You kind of get a sixth sense about this stuff when you start riding a motorcycle long enough and you know the things to look out for. But if you're kind of somebody who just eh, riding down the road, oh God, everything's great, blah, 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 and you're not ever looking out for other vehicles, you're not driving defensively, you're just kind of pretending like you're the only person on the road, a motorcycle is probably not for you. The road rager, right? Now there's a lot of motorcyclists like this and we've seen a number of different videos. Actually, it is one of the things that bugs me about the motorcycle uh, industry or community, especially online. You'll see somebody going at a high rate of speed way too fast for what they should and then a car pulls out in front of them and they're like, oh, I can't believe you didn't see me and you know, F this and F you and oh my God, you know, I'm going to break your mirror and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, you were going way too fast. What the hell are you complaining about? Now, there's some legitimate incidents where cars uh, run motorcycles off the road or they pull out in front of them when you're going at a normal rate of speed. But the one thing you got to remember on a motorcycle is you, you just have to pretend like you are invisible to everybody and anticipate that everybody's going to pull out in front of you at all times. So if you're somebody that consistently rages or you go through a wide range of emotions in your car, a motorcycle is not going to help you because being level-headed and clear-minded uh, is something you want to do, man. If there's ever a time where I'm like really angry or pissed off, I know some people say, man, I get on my bike and it frees my mind, but I tend to stay away from my motorcycle because I want to make sure that I'm as clear-headed as possible. I'm not thinking about things I'm going to do or things that I need to do. I'm just thinking about what's going on in the moment right then and there. And if you can't kind of stay in the moment where there's a period of time that you're going through that's really tough and emotional or whatever, um, it's not the best time to be on a motorcycle. I'm not saying that you could never ride a bike, at, you know, if you're going through certain things, but these are not the times to be on a bike when your emotions are going crazy one way or the other. And trust me, you're never going to win an argument or a battle with a four or five thousand pound car on the road so although you can get away quickly um, they could also end you right then and there if they decide to swerve into you and we've seen plenty of examples of that too now here's one that i know a lot of people will disagree with that is the person that's not willing to practice again it's very different than practicing let's say um parallel parking right when you first learn to drive or just learning to drive initially right it takes a little bit of practice you start to get the hang of it pretty much anybody can do it well a motorcycle it takes a little bit more than that i would dedicate something like 30 to 45 minutes a week at least to doing slow speed skills and things that will help you get out of situations whether that's swerving whether it's turns from a dead stop whether that's right hand turns left hand turns u-turns all of the a number of different things and exercises you can get from people all around the internet, right? Be the boss to your motorcycle. He's a friend of mine. I, you know, he taught me a lot when I went down to his class. It's something you always want to improve on because riding a motorcycle is perishable. So unless you're doing it, you're gonna lose it, right? So that is something you wanna consider as well. If you're not willing to put in a little bit of time, um, it doesn't take a lot, but if you're not willing to put in a little bit, maybe a motorcycle isn't for you. And just being straight up reckless. If you're somebody that knows that you will get yourself into trouble. I hear this probably more than any other reason that people say I don't want a motorcycle because they know they're going to go way too fast and they don't trust themselves on a bike. Now, I actually respect that a lot because if you understand and you've looked at yourself close enough to say, I know that I will not be able to contain myself, that's actually a very responsible thing. And again, that just shows that you understand, hey, I can have fun in my car, but I do not need a motorcycle because you just are not afforded the same leeway like you are in a vehicle, right? There's things you have to, certain things you need to wear and certain things you need to be prepared for and situations you're going to run into that are very uncomfortable. And if you're putting yourself in those positions, a motorcycle may not be for you as well.
Now, I can think of some more things, but if this video does good, I really think I'm going to do a part two because it's an interesting conversation to tell people, hey, you shouldn't do this. Um, and again, my goal is hopefully that you will self-analyze and say, that's probably right. I'm not saying that even if you possess these traits, some of them, or even all of them, or maybe even one of them, that you can't be somebody that rides a motorcycle and rides it well and safe. But understanding that habits have to be broken maybe before you get on the bike, that's going to be the best thing. And look, just motorcycles aren't for everybody, and that is okay. There's plenty of other fun options that you can take advantage of, whether that's trikes or can-ams, spiders, wh whatever the case is. Motorcycles simply are not for everyone. Now, I know we have some strong opinions about this, just like I do. Leave those down below, no matter if you agree or disagree. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. See you in the next one, and as always, hold them down.